Good morning and welcome to today's 20 minute update, BCF's monthly series of interactive calls, Facebook live streams to give you an inside look at BCF, our initiatives and work going on here in Baltimore City, the county and the entire region. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Andrew Waldman with BCF and joining me today are Donna Cobb, who is one of the co-chairs of the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. And on the phone, we have Anthony Presley, who is the executive director of the Druid Heights Communi Community Development Corporation. So good morning to both of you. Thank you, good morning. Good morning. Um, before we get started, I just want to take a, a real quick second to thank BCF's Civic Leadership Fund donors for their support. It's because of our Civic Leadership Fund donors that we're able to provide resources like today's 20 minute update. Okay, let's jump right into it. Today we're gonna to talk about the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. Um, we have talked about the Women's Giving Circle on the, on the 20 minute update before, and today we're gonna to just jump a little bit deeper into the, the circle's work. So just before we get, get into that, Donna, I wanted to just give you a chance to give us, you know, sort of the broad overview of the Giving Circle, which I know is difficult to do in a short time. So the mission of the Women's Giving Circle is to help Baltimore area women and their families achieve self-sufficiency. That's the mission. We do it through grant making. This year we had over 100 grant applications and we're in the process now of deciding who will receive them. Um, we do it through educating our members about issues important to Baltimore area women, whether they be related to Baltimore City, whether they relate to education. There's myriad issues that we educate our women about, which help make them better um, and more and more informed philanthropists. If sure. you want to use that word, yeah. Um, and just for the the audience, uh, a giving circle is sort of a group of people who come together, pool resources, and um, and make grants essentially. And how many people are involved in the women's giving circle? Currently we have about 450, 460 members. We started out almost 20 years ago with 52. And I think it's fair to say the founders never thought we'd be this big, mm. but we are. And so through the power of that collective giving, we were able to award almost a half million dollars every year to Baltimore area nonprofits whose work somehow impacts women and families. That's great. I think I did the math, or I did math quickly earlier, um, just to see how much it's been over the years, and it's something like close to five million dollars yeah, in grants exactly. now. So, the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle is a large giving circle in the scheme of community foundation giving circles. So, um, you kind of mentioned this already, but can you kind of describe how the circle's work has evolved over the years since you got involved? So. I've been involved since 2007, and since then, our Giving Circle has just become a really busy and robust organization. Um, just the way we're organized, we have two co-chairs, I'm one of them, and then we have we work do work by committees. So we, we have an education committee that has many moving parts, including a book group, uh, a advocacy group, a forum group, for example, our circle forum is going to visit Vehicles for Change and Maryland Food Bank on May 14th, which they're two of our grantees, hmm. to learn about their their programs firsthand. So there's uh, a lot more going on, wow. which is great. Yeah. Um, I think we have a short video um, that we wanted to play just to give people an overview of of the BWGC, and this is just a clip of a, of a larger video that they have on their website at uh, the BWGC.org. Yes. Okay, got that right, and we'll have that on the screen as well. So my colleague's gonna go ahead and... Welcome to the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle Grant Recommendation Day. It's a big day for those of us who have in, been involved in grants this year, and it's a wonderful day. So. We hope you enjoy it. The Baltimore Women's Giving Circle seeks to empower women and their families to achieve self-sufficiency. To do that, the circle provides grants to organizations that provide support services to women and their families, including health care, housing, job training, after-school programs for kids, youth mentoring, just to name a few. It's still growing. This program experience has meant growth, honestly. 
our mission here is to make food that we would give to our children. So I would like, I love making food that I could give to my child. My future goal is to one day open up my own catering business and to help out as many people as I possibly can. Perfect. So you mentioned a little bit before we played the video about the many the committees and groups that are involved in the circle. How do you get circle members out there to learn about Baltimore, educate them about what's going on in the community? So first, if you join the Giving Circle, which is really easy to do, you can go to our website and click the How to Join button. Uh, once a member, you are invited to join any committee you like. And so we have numerous ways to become educated. We have four full circle meetings every year. So, and those are all around a topic of uh, interest to the circle. For example, in September, we did a full circle conversation about the racial wealth divide. Hmm. Um, in, in December, we had another conversation continuing on the racial wealth divide. In March, we had a meeting, full circle meeting, about the impact of incarceration on women because the numbers of women in prison, sadly, is growing and it has a huge impact on not only them, but on their families and their communities. So that's one way. Um, and women who want to get even more involved can participate in the education committee and the, and the programs that it sponsors. That's how we end, I ended up meeting Anthony Presley, who's on the phone here with us. He is the executive director at Druid Heights Development Corporation, which is one of our grantees. So we recently went to visit and had a wonderful time with Anthony and his amazing staff. We took a walking tour of the neighborhood to see all the things that they're accomplishing with housing and businesses and work on Pennsylvania Avenue. It was really fabulous. And I think maybe now is a good time. Anthony, why don't you give us an overview of your organization and um, sort of what you do out there in Druid Heights? Absolutely. And first, I just really want to thank the Women's Giving Circle. Uh, it's hard to measure how uh, they have impacted this community and uh, our women's shelter. Uh, but Druid Heights, our mission is to cause and encourage community self-empowerment through the development of economic, educational, employment, and affordable housing opportunities. The organization's been around since 1990, and we work in four main areas. One is outreach, where we have an after-school program, summer camp free to kids, our monthly community meetings, and our newsletters come out of our outreach department. And then we have reentry, where we provide housing for men and women coming from incarceration. And we also provide housing for families transitioning from homeless shelters uh, into what we have is a Section 8 housing voucher site program, a women's shelter with uh, 21 three-bedroom units. And that's where the Women's Giving Circle came and gave and helped us really make some different, make a big difference down in that program. We also do housing counseling. Uh, First time, first Saturday of each month, we teach our first time home buyers class. And, uh, we say we, we see on an average 40 families a month, uh, which totals about 580 families a year. And right now we have 93 families under contract ready to purchase a home somewhere mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Yay. Mm -hmm. And they all came through outdoors for, uh, the home buyers workshops. And we also do real estate development. And as we're speaking, we're building 14 newly constructed homes up on Pennsylvania and Baker to add to the Bakersfield development we're doing. So we're busy and we can't do this work by ourselves. And if I could just go right into, you know, um, what a blessing the Women's Giving Circle has been. As it was mentioned, they came here to ha have a meeting, but not only did they meet, they stayed with us. And they, I mean, they spent the day with us. They took a tour. Uh, the community saw these women passing through the community, and they really, really made an impact on not only the, uh, the, the work we do, but on the people in the community. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about how that, uh, what that was like. Um, you know, what did you hear from people in the circle or in the community about, about this connection that was made? Right. Well, the connection was first made in 2017 when the Women's Giving Short Circle awarded us with $20,000 to help us with these uh, families who are in our women's shelter. 
and we pay their their gas and they pay their electricity. We also pay their water bill, but we were having troubles or uh, struggles with keeping these families, you know, uh, up to date on it on their part of the utilities. We found where they had a lot greater needs, more needs than we actually imagined. Um, some of them needed household cleaning items and uh, amenities, uh, even uh, personal amenities. And what the Women's Giving Circle did in 2017 is gave us funds to kind of help these families, you know, stay on track. And then in 2019, they awarded it again. So in their visit, they sat and they listened to us here at Drew Heights and our challenges with this program. And I, what was so amazing is that it became personal for these women. I didn't, we didn't feel like we were talking to, you know, a group of people who were just here to look and listen, but they actually cared. And just for an example, one of the members of the circle, just from hearing our story, she went in her checkbook and she wrote a check for $5,000, individual donor, wow. you know what I mean? Nice. And then another one gave uh, school supplies for our after-school program. And one of them also said to me and has expressed an interest to serve on our board of directors. Wow. So for me, that's going beyond, you know what I mean? That's really caring. And when they walked through the streets of the community, the community was just so impressed to see, what, 30 women walking through the streets of our community, <laughs> not just, you know, observing, but caring and, and talking to the people in the community. It was a real big day for us with their visit. I might add here what Anthony's talked about is what we call the ripple effect. Right. And it happens a lot. It's happened to me where um, women come uh, visit some of the programs we fund and right the next thing you know, they're either writing a check, they're getting on the board, they're finding other ways to contribute. And I think that's one of the real beautiful things about the Giving Circle for me is the ability to go and see firsthand what, we, what we're accomplishing with our grantees. I wonder right. how... And on that note, I, I should, you know, add that we've had lots of site visits from plenty of foundations, but never one to this extreme where, you know, they gave in the day they were there <laughs> and they came back the week later. You know what I mean? That was a first for us and very much appreciated. That's great. I wonder if you, uh, Donna, could... If, if there's a way, yeah, if you've noticed how working with a group like uh, Druid Heights CDC, going out, making these connections, does that change the way that DWGC does grant making or education programs in the future? What is, how does that inform things? I think it really, anyone who attends one of these site visits and visits like this, it deepens your understanding of what the challenges are in Baltimore uh, for women and families and just what the staff of, of these nonprofits are trying to accomplish, often on shoestring budgets. And so I think if you're a grant reader, you take that knowledge back and it, it forms you, I think it, it's very informative when you're reading grants the following year. Because you have a sure. better understanding, I think, of, of some of the issues. Um, I think it's also one of my favorite things to do is to go visit grantees because, as we all know, Baltimore is facing some very tough challenges. And people like Anthony, his staff, you don't hear about what they're doing, but they're accomplishing real benefits in very challenged neighborhoods like Penn North. Um, I mean, I think you told us that the houses that you built a few years ago, they're all owner occupied and only one family's moved out. I mean, right. and then the bakery we went to around the corner is doing gangbusters. It was really, we all just came back from that feeling so hopeful. Uh, about Baltimore, and I think that's what a lot of Circle members f get from this experience, is you meet these incredible folks on the front lines all around Baltimore City and Baltimore County doing really amazing work. That's great. Yeah. Um, Anthony, I know you're really busy, but I just wanted to give people a chance uh, before you go to ask a question if they had it. Um, so if you're watching on our Facebook live stream, you can just type it right into the comments. Um, if you're listening on the call, you can hit star six on your keypad to unmute yourself. So if you're on the call, I'll give you a second to, to do that if you want to ask a we question. We have a question. We do actually have a question. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me read it real quick. Okay, so 
this is actually more of a general comment. Um, very excited to hear about the program. Would love to have the Giving Circle uh, come to one of our meetings. This is um, a group called uh, the Park Lane Neighborhood Association. So uh, there's a few people out there who are interested in learning more. I want to just say if you're um, listening on the call or on the live stream, check out the bwgc.org to see more information about them. And um, I, I don't know, Don, if you want to react to that. What right, can no, do if I mean, interested. yes, and anyone who's got questions can send um, an email to help at the bwgc.org. Any potential grantees out there? Um, and if you've never come to one of our information sessions, which we hold every fall here at the BCF, or anyone interested in applying for a grant, send your contact information to grants at the bwgc.org. BWGC um, the website has information about how to apply for a grant, how to join the circle. Um, and the other thing about the circle is you can be as involved as you want. You can just write your check and know that it'll be well spent. Let and we love yeah. women who do that. You can become deeply involved in numerous committees or you can attend the full, full, full circle meetings we have. It's, there's a, a wide range of, of abilities to participate. So Great. Um, Anthony, do you have a couple more minutes or do you need to go? Oh, no, I'm fine. Okay, great. Um, I wondered if you might, uh, you gave us kind of a great overview of what you're doing, but um, what is in store for the future on, on for uh, Druid Heights CDC? Well, you know, what, something else is going on. We are part of the city's three network plan. So DNR, or the Department of Natural Resources, they're building a Welcome to Historic Drude Heights Park on the corner of North and Drude Hill Avenue right now. Should be open by the end of the month. Uh, beautiful park. Uh, they've invested $200,000 into this corner and making it look welcoming into the community. We're also doing a, another park uh, down in the 1900 block of McCullough Street, uh, National Wildlife Foundation, they're building a nature play space. So one of the things that's important for us is that our vacant lots, we appreciate, you know, being able to uh, raise some of these vacant buildings and uh, make green space, but we don't just want big vacant lots in the community. We want every lot to have some kind of amenity or to serve as an amenity to the community. So we have uh, the Gold Street Park coming where the city has $100,000 reserve for us to build that park and Chesapeake Bay Trust is, in, is our partner in building a new stormwater management park in the community. So we have about 11 parks coming and as many as 21 newly constructed homes. We've renovated over 250 of the homes in the community. So we've done a lot of development and that's really what's keeping us moving forward. But I, I just wanted to say one more thing about the Women's Giving Circle. Um, when, when they walk through the community, we I've never received so many calls from community residents uh, that day. We received so many calls, and everybody wanted to know more about the women. They could tell that they were caring because they stopped in the community. They, they looked around. They went into the parks. So the phone started ringing off the hook. So what that did for us is it, it validated I will work with the community. When you're in the streets and you're in the community working this hard, the people in the community can't really see it until they see others coming to see it, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so looking at these women walk through the community really encourage the community in a way that I really can't explain. That's great. We, you, I mean, I want to give you a chance to tell us a little bit about the other programs that uh, BWGC funds and has participated in, and also how do you decide on this? There's a huge breadth of grants that you make. I mean, how does that process all come together? So our grants are all listed on our website, so it would take a long time to go through all of them. Oh, not all of them. Let's right. go through a couple. A couple. <laughs> a couple. Um, oh, my gosh. They range. So we, I'm thinking of, in the video, you can see the City Seeds program that, that that's part of Humanum that's over in East Baltimore, and that's a program, it's a really a workforce development program, and they're featured in the video. Sarah's Hope, which is on the west side on Mount Street, is um, a transition ho transitional housing program for formerly homeless families, and they've had great success with housing people, you know, transitioning people to their own homes when they come out of Sarah's Hope. Um, hmm, boy, I don't want to like 
you know, there's so many. Um, Sister Circle is a mentoring program. Here's an example. Sister Circle is a mentoring program in Baltimore, and I'm in a mentor because okay. of what I learned in the Giving Circle. Hmm. And so I've been mentoring a, 11, a girl who's, I've had her since she was 11. She's now 17. We just wow. went to Sherwood Gardens together yesterday. Perfect. Um, wow. And... Um, they've done amazing work with pairing um, mentors, Baltimore women, with young women in Baltimore for six to seven years. Wow. And changing the lives of both the mentor and the mentee. But there's, I mean, there's so many amazing programs. You know, we're going to go visit, as I said, Vehicles for Change and Maryland Food Bank, which has a workforce development culinary program. Um, Gosh. And, and something else that's a little different about the Women's Giving Circle is they have a grantee connect. Oh, So thank you. once you receive the grant from them, they stay connected to you. They have another form coming up on May 2nd, which brings together all the grantees and uh, uh, pipelines networking and just just great resources. And I, I, I can't speak enough on how foundations will give, but then after they give, that's that's pretty much it. But for the Women's Giving Circle to bring everybody back to learn best practices and some other uh, networking skills is really key. Thank you for mentioning that. That is also a really, uh, I think, a, a fairly unique thing that we do. And I know this year I noticed in some of our grant applicants that they're partnering with other of our grantees because they met each other at Grantee Connect and right. realized there was a synergy. They were both trying to accomplish similar goals and they could do more together. So... That's uh, another wonderful thing that we have going on. Amazing. Um, I just want to give anyone who is listening on the call a chance to ask a question. Um, we got a couple more seconds here. Star six on your phone if you want to ask it. And we're checking on Facebook real quick to see if we can get one more question in. Anything? Okay. So we're going to have to follow up on that last question. So we're, we're just about out of time here. I want to thank my guest, Donna Cobb, co-chair of the BWGC, for being here with us in the studio, and Anthony Presley, the uh, executive director of Druid Heights CDC. Um, thank you both for joining thank us you. today. Um, we'll be Great. back next month uh, on May 22nd with our annual investment briefing. That will be our 20-minute update. So... Stay tuned for more on that. And once again, thank you for watching and listening today. And have a good one. Thanks. Anthony, I'll see, you on, you. May, I'll see you on May 2nd at Grantee Connect. Yay. <laughs> have a good one. Thanks all. Bye -bye. Take care.